Good morning, Doctor. And a good morning to you too, Elsa. You look radiant. Thank you, Doctor. We haven't been seeing much of you lately, Elsa. You've been missing appointments. I'm sorry, Doctor. I've been feeling much better. That's very good to hear. And what has brought about this improvement? It's the new man in my life. He's convinced me to fight my addiction. Ah, the policeman from the newspapers. How has he coped with his fall from grace? He can finally see things from a human perspective, rather than the ivory tower he created for himself. It's making him stronger. It's making me stronger, healthy. You wouldn't make a bad analyst yourself, Elsa. Should we swap seats? <laughs> We're both finding we have a lot to live up to. And what is that? In my case, Lou. He went through hell along with me and still came out smiling. In Cole's case, his friend, Jack Kelso. Kelso? You've heard of him? No, uh, I just like the sound of his name. Cole and Jack are working on a case together. Is Jack a policeman too? No, he works for the district attorney. What? He's a special investigator. I thought you didn't know him. I have never met the gentleman in question. He has been looking into Lou's case. Cole thinks it might be linked to some fires he's investigating. You look pale, Doctor. It's cold in here, Elsa. I think I'll close the window. Why are you looking at me like that, Elsa? You arranged for Lou to work at Elysian Fields, Doctor. Your fears are unfounded. I meet many people in my line of work. There are many ways that people can be helped. Finding them work is just one of them. I don't believe you, Doctor. I've seen you with Monroe at the club. I'm sorry that you have come to that conclusion, Elsa. I've always so enjoyed our conversation. I can see your future, Elsa. And Cole, the policeman. And Jack, the investigator. It's an unfortunate and grisly end. I've come to help you, Doctor. To help you cross over. All your sins will be forgiven. The next slide. got to be one of these places. The arsonist's a bug sprayer. He must have worked at one of these joints. How many guys you have working here, Pop? Who's asking, son? It could be official or unofficial. Depends on how you want to play it. You should get to a hospital, son. That arm of yours appears to be letting in daylight. Save the pity for the other guys. They're the ones who need it. I'm looking for a big cowboy who works pest control. Does he work here? We don't have anyone like that here. You sure? I'm not the type of guy you want coming back. Yeah, I'm sure. Are you drunk, mister? Or are you just cracked? Wow. That sure looks like a beauty. What have you got? Looks like a drug overdose. Get away from him, Phelps. This is my case. Shut your fucking mouth! 
Since when does a bag man work a case? I knew this creep wasn't on the morphine heist. Victim of his own product. Hey, detective! Can we back it off a notch? This is getting out of hand. It's a time to talk and a time to shut up. Now is the time to be quiet, son. Courtney Sheldon was a corpsman, Roy. He served his country. He went out with a medical kit and an Army 45 into places that made the Valley of Death look like a picnic. He was either naive enough or dumb enough to get involved in the Suburban Redevelopment Fund, along with the mayor, the DA, Monroe, and a certain crooked cop. He was involved in the morphine heist, but he has a puncture wound in his jugular, which makes this a murder case. He was a better man than you'll ever know. You say one more word about him and I will blow your fucking head off! You finally lost it, partner. I have a pretty good idea why Sheldon's dead. And I know about Monroe. Your vast, corrupt future is draining away as we speak. <laughs> I got better things to do than argue the rub with you. Stay with him until the coroner gets here. Make sure technical services bags the evidence. If you let this creep anywhere near it, I'll come looking for you. Yes, sir. You know, Phelps. You're not the worst asshole going around. Thanks, Herschel. Welcome to Nuclear. What can I do you for? I work for the DA. I need to speak with an exterminator, big guy with a cowboy accent. We have only three people work here. Me and two Mexicans. They're both on the scrawny side. Thanks for your help. for the DA. I'm looking for a big cowboy does extermination. Anyone like that working here? Well, I wouldn't want to get anyone into any trouble. We could do this the hard way. An address? Yeah. He lives in a bunkhouse on the remains of the old Rancho Rincon. Thanks. Cole, you made it. What's this got to do with me, Rusty? Dr. Fontaine, prominent shrink. Dead in his patient's room. Spine snapped like a twig. The suspect is one of his mental patients. I've met Fontaine. His last patient was Elsa Lickman, Cole. She's missing. Ha -ha. Nurse said that she saw some big Boris Karloff type carry her out of here. The best thing that you can do to help me, Rusty, is let me take a look around. Sure thing, Cole. This way. Take your time. I'll give you and the doctor some privacy. That got of yours is burning down our houses. Keep your voice down, Leland. Control is of the essence. Keep your voice down. 
Do you know how much these sons of bitches charge for lunch? Fuck them! Leland, we will not solve our problems by announcing them to the general public. We only speed ourselves on our way to the gallows. He's your imbecile, Harlan. Get him under control or get rid of him. Speaking of which, I've had to dispose of our young medical student. What? You certainly are a cold character, Harlan. He has a friend called Kelso who knows all about the development on Norman the Avenue. I know about Kelso. And you thought it unimportant to inform me. I thought I could take care of it. And have you? No, I haven't. Kelso works for Benson. Is he reliable? No, he's totally unreliable. But he has so many pernicious habits, he's got nowhere to run. Can you take care of Kelso? Don't push me, Harlan. Get rid of the fruitcake. It's no longer necessary. I'll take care of Jack Kelso. Good doctor has been marking this map. Edward Grove, McCarthy Vista, Crescent Heights, Rancho Escondido. Do those names mean anything to you, Herschel? Yeah. How come? New houses all being built in the path of the freeway? Destroyed by a monster of your own creation, Dr. Fontaine. I've heard that story somewhere before. So much for your foresight, Doctor. Fontaine was having the houses burned from Monroe. Monroe wasn't happy. People started dying and it attracted attention. He and the doctor lost control. Looks like Fontaine has finally dispensed his last treatment. Jack was wrong. It's not about insurance, it's about eminent domain. What are you talking about, Cole? The government reclaims the land in the path of the freeway and pays the improved value of the land with the new houses sitting on it. What about the stiffs who paid their deposits? Worst case, they get their money back. But the syndicate pockets millions on the improved value of the land. So where does Jack's boss come into it? He's the key. He carries the insurance. The insurance proves how much the houses are worth. And they're worth nothing. Firewood. All of them. That's about as neat a scam as you can imagine. How are we going to prove any of this, Cole? The doctor's dead. The roll nearly bled to death. If they get Jack... We need the firebug. The Oki cowboy. Get him, get Elsa. Get him, get all of them.
Guess nobody's home. Quite a flock you got here, kid. The river tunnels. This guy's a tunnel rat. A strange obsession. Most guys bring home a 45 or an M1. This is pretty extreme. 